number 33, usually guarded the opponent's best forward. Tom's a six foot seven senior from South Bend, Indiana, and what a job he did on Washington. He did not allow the sharp shooting UCLA forward any room at all. Against Benson, Washington had scored five points in the opening two minutes of the game. Abernathy didn't allow Washington to score for the next 26 minutes, or putting it another way, not until there were 13 minutes left to go in the game. Abernathy also found time to do a few other things. He rebounded. He passed off. And he also scored himself. Finishing with 10 points to lead all scorers at halftime. Another key Indiana performer against UCLA during the first half was number 42, Scott May. Scott poured in four important baskets near the halfway mark of the first half. Just look at the skill of this 6-7 consensus All-American. Bobby Knight says May is the best player he's ever coached. He says it comes from hard work, sheer hard work. That's why he's so good. Scotty can do it all. Indiana led at halftime, 34 to 26. played an exceptionally strong first half. Twice, they had to overcome five-point UCLA leads, and they played magnificently on defense. As a result, Indiana did not have to make many adjustments at halftime. At the halftime, we cautioned our players to try and come out as tough as they could to begin the second half. I've always felt that the most important segment of any ball game is the first five minutes of the game, and then secondly is the first five minutes of the second half. Early in the second half, Indiana opened up a 12-point lead on Quinn Buckner's driving layup. Without question, Bobby Knight was delighted. Our offense in the UCLA game was a little bit different than it, uh, than it was in most previous ball games throughout the course of the season. Scott May was being very, very closely defended against and was not able to get a great number of scoring opportunities. Quinn Buckner did a great job for us in the first half. He hit a couple of jump shots against the UCLA zone. He took the ball to the basket. He handled the ball extremely well. We got pretty good scoring throughout the course of the ball game from Kent Benson. And I think one of the really important things in the ball game for us was Bobby Wilkerson rebounding. From the very beginning to the very end of the ball game, uh, Bobby played the boards, I thought, better than anybody in the game. That's for sure. Watch number 20 closely as he soars, pulling down rebound after rebound with those long arms. Against UCLA, Wilkerson dominated the boards. He got 11 rebounds in the first half, finished the game with a high of 19. Equally as powerful and effective on both the offensive and defensive boards. Here, Wilkerson misses a shot, battles for the rebound, and then scores. He's fouled. And that just about clinches it. A three-point play, giving the Hoosiers their biggest lead of the game, 45-32. As the game progressed, UCLA did manage to catch fire. They cut the margin to 48-42 to with a little bit over eight minutes to go. So Indiana called timeout, and Bobby Knight describes what happened in the big play that followed. We really didn't do anything very difficult at the timeout or very intricate. We just talked about maintaining our lead and going from there and, and trying to increase it a little bit so we could have some room going down to the wire. And I think one of the really key offensive plays, if not the key offensive play in the ball game, occurred at this point when Tom Abernathy made a great baseline drive to the basket, putting the ball uh, in to increase our lead again to eight or ten points. No doubt about that. It was a crucial play of the game. The score, once again, Indiana 48, UCLA 42. The Bruins had momentum. They were shooting 42% from the field compared to 30%, a cool 30 for Indiana. Watch this play develop now. Slowly, the Hoosiers work the ball. Abernathy just gets a step on his man at the baseline, and he's got it. And unfortunately, on that play, Abernathy injured himself. So off the bench came number 45, Jim Cruz, a six-foot-five senior from Norma, Illinois. Indiana always had good bench strength all year long, and Cruz certainly proved it in the final minutes. As you can see, Indiana goes into the delay game. And it was Cruz who directed the Hoosiers down the stretch. Here, he's trying to set up Kent Benson. And just watch this pass. He rifles into Benson, who is all alone underneath the basket. There it is. 
Only a few seconds remained as UCLA brought the ball down court for the last time. The Hoosiers had stopped the Bruins cold. UCLA would not be in the finals for only the second time in the past decade. It was a total team effort for the Hoosiers. Indiana had used only six players against UCLA, and each really contributed. Benson, May, Abernathy, Buckner all scored in double figures. Wilkerson had 19 rebounds. And credit Jimmy Cruz with some flawless ball handling. Having disposed of UCLA, the stage was now set. Monday, March 29th, Philadelphia Spectrum, Indiana against Michigan for the NCAA championship. The Michigan Wolverines, coached by Johnny Orr, had advanced to the big game by snapping Rutgers' 31-game winning streak. They beat the Scarlet Knights by 16 points in the semifinals. Twice during the regular Big Ten season, Indiana had beaten Michigan in close games, once in overtime. Never before had two teams from the Big Ten played for the NCAA Basketball Championship. To Bobby Wilkerson, a senior from Anderson, Indiana, it was more than just another game. Everybody was really looking forward to coming in this game and, you know, doing the best that we could because we knew this is, especially the five seniors, our last chance to, to show ourselves. And it could be, well, no doubt about it, it was the most important game in our, you know, in our college career. Knight and the Hoosiers had come close a year ago. They won their first 31 games and then suffered a 92-90 loss to Kentucky in the Mideast Regional. Some say Indiana could have beaten Kentucky and gone on to win the national championship had Scott May not played with his broken left arm in a cast. Be that as it was, Indiana now had another chance. And here the Hoosiers were introduced for the final time. Number 42, Scott May, 33, Abernathy, 54, Benson, 21, Buckner, 20, Wilkerson. And now the thoughts of Coach Bobby Knight. We knew that a very important thing for us would be to combat the Michigan speed and actually the, the quickness of the Michigan team, probably one of the quickest teams I've seen play college basketball, was something that we had been faced with throughout a uh, number of games prior to this one. Sure enough, the Wolverines struck like lightning, running right from the start of the game. Watch this fast break. Number 45, John Robinson passes to speedster Ricky Green. He beats everybody down court to score in an easy layup. And now pay close attention to this next play. Number 32 of Michigan, Wayman Britt. They head down court. After he shoots, his elbow accidentally smashes into the left temple of number 20, Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson dropped to the court, unconscious. Well, I just remember, you know, turning on a fast break and getting hit, and that was it. You know, me and Quinn was back, and he was on one side, and I was on the other. And I turned as, you know, Wayman Britt was going to shoot. And then I got hit, and that's all I remember for a couple of days. As we can see, close up, Wilkerson had been knocked cold. He lay motionless under the Michigan basket for a long time. More than five heart-stopping minutes. Fear quickly spread through the crowd of more than 17,000 people in the spectrum. Wilkerson definitely appeared seriously injured. His teammates were visibly worried, so were the Michigan players. Now a healthy Bobby Wilkerson can recall his thoughts. It was kind of like I was dreaming, you know, and I wasn't sure that the next day when I woke up, I kept asking everybody, you know, did we win? And it didn't seem for real, you know. Just, I guess because I was unconscious. Wilkerson's injury undoubtedly affected the play of the Hoosiers. Bobby Knight encouraged his players, but Michigan immediately took advantage of the situation, increasing the lead from two to eight points in the next five minutes. Indiana, trailing 18 to 10, called a timeout to regroup. Following the timeout, Indiana played like a different team, starting with this beautiful Quinn Buckner pass to Kent Benson for the layup. Buckner also sets up the next basket, passing off to Tom Abernathy. He makes it, and he was fouled, making it a three-point play. Indiana's coming on strong. Scott May's jump shot cuts Michigan's lead to 18 to 17. And the action was frantic. Benson passing to Buckner. And he scores on this twisting shot, and Indiana leads 23 to 20. Johnny Orr obviously upset, but Michigan did not give up. On this play, number 30, Steve Grody steals an inbound pass. Ricky Green hits it. Michigan is ahead 31 to 27. Indiana comes right back. Number 45, Jim Cruz passes to Benson. And he scores on his famous sweeping hook shot. The Hoosiers trail by 2, 31 to 29.
There was still another 20 minutes to play, and Scott may talk confidently about the second half. When we walked out in the second half, we were down six points against Michigan. I felt confident. I'm sure everybody on our squad felt confident. If we could have just catch up and tie the score within a few minutes, that there was no way they were going to keep us from winning the national championship. The thing that without any question I'll remember most about the 1970 576 national championship season in Indiana University was the second half of the Michigan game. I felt this was probably the 20 minute segment that we played the best basketball that we played at any time during the course of the season. We made just two errors during the second half and this was a team that I felt had worked extremely hard to get where they were, a team that I thought in every respect was deserving of the title national champion and I think they went about the second half proving that they were the best team in the country. All the experts agreed this was the finest 20 minutes of basketball they had ever seen. Indiana completely dominating the second half. One of the Hoosier stars was Kent Benson. Connecting here on the hook shot, making the score, Michigan 39, Indiana 37. In the second half, Benson missed only two of eight shots, in addition to pulling down six rebounds. Two points now separated the teams. The Wolverines were definitely rattled and off their game, having scored only four points in the first five minutes of the second half. One reason was the all-around play of number 21, Quinn Buckner, the Indiana co-captain, who displayed superb leadership. What a second half he had. He did it all. The six-foot-three senior from Phoenix, Illinois, hustled from one end of the court to the other. He rebounded. He stole the ball. And he scored. In the second half alone, he totaled 15 points. Here, the Indiana spark plug scores again. No wonder his teammates considered him the team leader on the court. Johnny Orr simply could not believe Buckner's performance. Now with 11 minutes to go, Kent Benson taking a pass from Scott May. He scores on the layup, and Indiana is ahead 51 to 49, and the Hoosiers are rolling. Next it was Scott May's turn. He hangs in the air, scores on a jump shot from inside the circle. This next Indiana basket was a big one. Rich Balavicius scores after being set up by Jim Wisman. Number 23, Wisman was the key to the Indiana offense. He followed the coach's instructions perfectly. As uh, Coach Knight put me into the game, he said, all I want you to do is get the ball where it should be in the, you know, in the hands of Scott, where he can get his jump shot or inside to Benny, where he uh, could go on the uh, Michigan center. With only six minutes to play in the game, Indiana leading 63 to 59, Scott May showed why he was known as Mr. Clutch. The play that broke Michigan's back. Watch this unbelievable shot. And here is May coming right back to do it again, this time on the fast break to put Indiana ahead 78 to 66. The Hoosiers were just two minutes away from winning the national championship. Indiana spent the rest of the game at the free throw line as Michigan committed fouls in desperation in the final minutes. The Wolverines played gallantly, but it wasn't enough. And here is how Coach Bobby Knight felt at this point. During the final moments of the Michigan game, I think those of you that witnessed it saw an extremely jubilant group of people, not just players, but coaches alike. It was the end of a long, long wait and an awful lot of work, and I think everything just kind of spilled over at the end. We were often characterized as a team of mechanical people, but I don't think uh, anyone that was around our team, anyone that was close to the players or the people involved would have ever thought this. This was a team with great emotions and great feelings for one another, and I think all of this was displayed at the end of the game. The first Indiana starter to leave the game was Quinn Buckner, who rushed over and embraced a wildly exuberant Bobby Knight and then broke into the victory dance. Meanwhile, back on the court, there were only 12 ticks left on the clock. Another foul was called on Michigan. At this point, it was Scott May's turn to dance. He and Kent Benson had victory written all over their faces. They were deliriously happy. Together, they had accounted for 51 points and 17 rebounds. Scott May describes his feelings. And that's what I wanted, to be a part of a national championship team. And you know, I would have done anything in the world just to be a part of it. It was just like a dream come true. And now Kent Benson's thoughts. I personally have wanted to play in the national championship. Getting that opportunity was just fantastic. And I just thank God that I had the opportunity to, to play on such a fine team. 
Following Benson off the court was number 45, Jim Cruz. Bobby Knight greeted Cruz the same way he did with the others, a big hug and a big embrace. The game ended on the following play. The Hoosier subs were on the court. The final play, number 22, Wayne Radford drives. He misses, but the rebound is put in by a leaping number 32, Mark Hamor. It was all over. Doing the right thing, basketball philosophy. These bicentennial champions were perfection, maybe the best champs ever, for a coach who would be back in the title game on that very same floor five years later. 1976, a look back. We hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Bob Lee.